Welcome back. My name is Nate. I'm Reggie. We're here to help you improve your balance. Congratulations, you made it to day five. Awesome. So you've done a great job this week and we're gonna wrap it up today. So this is the functional fitness and the reflex day. All right. Yes. Yeah, should be a fun one. Yep, so we're gonna have a lot of fun today. So we're gonna do movements. Functional fitness is things that you do with your body that are functional. So things like squatting and stepping and hopping and different things that you're gonna you're gonna need to do throughout the day getting up and down getting up and down out of a chair that kind of stuff and also the reflexes people don't realize play a huge role in balance so we're gonna check your reflexes how fast you can move how quickly and that's a really fun one as well so make sure you've got first of all the safety uh, check so to see that there's nothing you're gonna trip on around you um, also we've got a few props that you're gonna use today um, you're gonna need a ball, so you know, a racquetball, tennis ball, you know, like a dog toy or something, you know, round and something squishy works well. Um, you're gonna need a book and a box of Kleenex, all right? And we're gonna show you what we do with that at the end. You may need a chair, so uh, if, especially if you need to sit, if you have a hard time standing the whole time, the chair is good. This will also help you get up and down from the floor. Um, and a dish towel, so we'll show you what we're gonna do with the dish towel and also a blanket, so something to make the floor a little softer. Yeah, if, you, if you've got a nice comfy carpet, you probably won't need the blanket, and you might not need all of these. So uh, see what you have around the house. Uh, if you have a ball, hand towel, book, um, that's a good place to start too. Yeah, and it's a good idea to also, for this one, um, if you want to do it in front of your couch, just because if you have any you know, worry that you might fall over, having yourself right in front of the couch is a really good way to do these confidently. So make sure you're safe, all right? Safety first. Thanks. So we're gonna get started with waking up the feet. Yeah, so uh, start with our base again. So we wanna do a little bit of a massage. So if you don't have a ball or you know even a, a can of soup or something, uh, you can just have a seat and just go ahead and massage your own feet. I think we don't give them the, enough uh, love and attention. So if you have a ball, just put it on the ground. You can roll it back and forth, a little bit of circles. A lot of people wake up with, you know, stiff, sore feet. It's pretty natural. You're sleeping, they're, you know, they're kind of, your toes are down, everything sort of tightens up. So uh, good to wake them up. Um, so with the ball, uh, you want to just find those little sore spaces, work them out, get all the way back to the heel, get along the sides of the feet up towards the balls of the feet and the toes and the inside of the feet. Figure out if there's any little sore spaces and just get it, you know, not hurting it, but enough to know that you're getting some blood flow there, getting the nervous system going, uh, getting some of that healing energy um, inside of us. So we can switch feet here if we want. And if you want to do this sitting also, you know, um, that can be a little easier if standing and rolling is tough, you know, lean on a wall or, or you can do this sitting and rolling also. Um, also, the, the softness of the ball makes a difference. If it's something squishy, it's really comfortable. Something like a tennis ball or even like a golf ball can be pretty hard. Some people like that. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, if you're massaging your feet, um, you can go ahead and like twist your toes around even. Uh, if, if you can stand and reach your toes too, that's great. It's so nice to be able to just reach our feet, um, you know, get their hand warmth on there. Little toe circles, spread the toes. Yeah, especially if your feet are cold. So if you notice your feet are cold, generally there's less circulation there. That means your reflexes are tending to be a little slower. So getting the blood flowing into your feet makes you a little more responsive, helps with your reflexes. So if you want to work on your balance while doing this, and this feels good, um, and you can try to lift your knee and ankle up and balance what you do it there. If you're doing this, try to keep the um, ankle below the knee. If you start pulling up on the foot too much, you can put a lot of tension on the outside of the knee there. So just keep it a little lower. This is, if, if you can do this, this is a really good sign that you know your, your joints are pretty good. If you can balance on one leg, get your leg up, and touch your feet, that's you're doing great. Right. That's, that's definitely pro level right there. <laughs> Nice. So uh, now that they're warmed up a little, stretched out, we want to try and strengthen them too. A lot of people have plantar fasciitis, inflammation of the, uh, the tendons on the bottom of the foot. And the best way to cure that is not to just stretch it, but really strengthen them. So try to pick up that ball, you know, or use your little hand towel here. Uh, it's a good way to, to work on clenching those uh, toes, you know, strengthening the bottom of our feet, those arches. 
know, it, pretty hard to pick up a ball, but see if you can. It's more the attempt, really, than the success of it. Just curling those toes. Um, we have the other switch sides. This one works, it's a little bigger. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Get a dog toy or something. Next time you find something on the ground, so you pick it up yeah. your toes. Pick up a, a Lego from your grandkids or something. <laughs> Not just embedded in your foot. <laughs> <laughs> That'll wake your feet up. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, an old shirt works. You know, any fabric tends to work pretty well for this. And when I had plantar fasciitis, the, the one thing that just cured it within you know, a week or two is when I uh, finished the shower, I put the towel down on you know the bathroom floor, kind of a, um, a smoother surface, and you just alternate right foot, left foot, scrunching it up. Uh, it's kind of hard to do on carpet with a towel, um, but if you, if you have a slicker floor and you're in a position that you, know, you feel safe, uh, you're not going to fall over or you can sit down uh, and do this in the kitchen or something. Uh, it's a really good way to, you know, nice short, you know, 30 second, one minute exercise in the morning that can that make a big difference for you. Nice. All right. Feet feeling warm there? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's go to some marching now. So you're going to just find a comfortable spot and start by just marching in place. And you might want to lean on a wall there. Or if you're doing this with a friend, if they're stable, you could hang on to them. So, <laughs> funny, funny system. So try to lift the opposite hand and leg. Okay, so from this, from the side view, you can see, just like you're walking, just exaggerating it. This is a really a sign of uh, decline. Is when people start shuffling when they walk, right? If you notice yourself shuffling more, you really want to work on picking your feet up. So really exaggerate it, nice and high. This will get your heart rate up, your blood circulating. Make you some good arm swings there. Yeah, and, and especially the backwards arm swing. You, know, of, you don't necessarily focus on that. See what your range of motion is. Yeah. So that if you can get your knees up to about hip height, that's a really good challenge. It's okay to start off lower than that. And then try turning your torso. So keep your legs moving and then just move your torso from side to side and turn your head. All right, so our vision plays a big role in balance. So when you move your vision, side to side, as you're walking and lifting, you're gonna really build the independence of your body. So you won't have to rely on your vision all the time. So often that's when trips happen, when you're hiking and you're looking at something, you have to make sure your legs are still moving, and still active, all right? So challenge yourself with your vision changing. All right, so hopefully you're getting nice and warm there. And so we can even uh, marching at different angles. So, so just picking the leg up to the side instead. Have a nice uh, hip stretch, groin stretch exercise. We do this a lot in soccer. Yeah, and if you're getting exhausted, you can do this sitting also. You need to do this with a little bit less pressure. It works just as well sitting. Nice. All right, so I'm feeling pretty warm there. Yeah. Shake it out here. Um, so the next one we're going to be doing is a little bit of uh, uh, hopping, and this is a really good one if, if something unexpected happens. You catch your toe, can you recover from it? So good to have uh, the, that agility still. So nice and simple. Uh, so our first level is just stepping. All right, so if you feel good with this, you can use a chair in front of you. Um, you can go a little bit lower, you can bend your legs, if you will uh, work out there. If this is feeling fine, let's add the hop. All right, so this a little bit of up, and both feet should just be off the ground for a second together. All right, so make sure you're feeling safe doing this. Then having that chair there can be really helpful, actually, because uh, you're just going a few inches to each side. But if this feels good, too, if you feel like you're ready, you can keep both feet together and just do a little bit of a hop together, okay? And if this is still easy, you can be doing this faster. This little bit of impact is really good for your bones. So it can help build that strength and that density in your bones. So that little bit of impact is really important. Uh, if you're still stepping, that's great. All right, just wanna keep that movement. Uh, now we're gonna do a little bit of a, a box shape. We're gonna add the forward movement uh, as well. So if you're stepping, you know, 
just leaning with one foot, making a little bit of a box. Okay? And you can make this a hop if you want, you can make them larger, you can make them smaller. If you want to keep your two feet together, you can do that as well. But just making a little bit of a square, all right? making sure that we're able to move easily in all directions. Uh, and we can go the other way. So reverse the box. Hopping, stepping, jumping, just keeping that agile coordination. Okay, we're reaching with our toes, okay? walking with the, you know, the toes, a little more agile than just landing on your heels. And this is one where if you're using a yoga mat, you may want to do it without it because it can bunch up sometimes. So just be aware of that, okay? Thanks. Yeah, it's good movement today, for sure. All right, so now we're gonna work on heel and toe raises. So this is really important. Because again, we're almost always just using our foot in one position, and the feet can get very, very stiff, especially if you use shoes all day. They don't get enough movement in all directions. So you can do this either standing, you can touch a wall, or you can do this in front of a chair. And we're gonna start off, just raise your heels up and down a couple times, just get warmed up there. Right, and then you can alternate. So you go heels up, heels down, toes up, toes down, heels up, heels down, toes up. This is where if you want to do this, sit standing right in front of a couch or a chair. If you have any worry about falling backward, make sure you're safe back there, okay? Yeah, you can even do this sitting too if that's, uh, that's where you're at. If you're on the couch, you can just remember to do these a couple, you know, just keep that range of motion, especially the toe raise. Uh, a lot of uh, trips happen because we're not lifting our feet as high anymore you know, over that step or that obstacle. So keeping yeah. that toe strong. And if you do catch something, having the strength to overcome it. So. Um, yeah, all right. Good. So that, that'd be really good for ankles, calves, and your feet. All right, so uh, we're gonna go back to some bigger muscle groups and we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, squats. Um, and if you wanna use a chair, that's great too. So ideally, we should be able to squat and reach the ground somehow. I think it's really important to be able to reach the ground. If we start to fall, can we get there um, and help uh, direct ourselves slower to the ground? So if you can take a, a little wider stance, see if you can touch the ground. All right, if you can't, no worries. Just go until, you know, about 80% of your effort. Don't overdo it, don't hurt yourself. We do this for about a minute, so slow is good. Yeah, and so what I'm doing here is I'm just resting for a moment on the chair. So there's, so you're basically just doing half the movement, resting, doing the other half. So that works, I've got a real wide stance. You can make it more challenging by bringing your feet in more as well. Or another way to make it more challenging with the chair is to just very lightly touch your butt on the chair. Don't put all your weight, but just touch and come back up. This is one of the really important things that doctors check for to test um, balance risk is the sit to stand. How strong, how easy can you get up and down without using your arms and just using the strength and power of your legs. And I'm going to shift it just a little bit. Uh, so we're going to take a little wider stance, um, see if you can adapt this in a chair at all. We just want to come to one side a little bit. All right, just kind of slow, shifting that weight to one side. All right, don't go too far, this might be tough on the knees, but just getting used to shifting that, that weight. Yeah, for this one, especially if you have arms in the chair, it's not gonna work well, so I would suggest put your stand behind the chair and use it just for a little bit of a hand support. Yeah, these outer hips are very important to strengthen. And think of going down on the side more than over too far. You're really not shifting side to side too much, you're just kind of keeping that leg under you and taking the weight off of the other one. That can help keep the knees in a better position is if you just keep it under you and sort of lift up the other foot, trying to make one of your feet a little bit weightless. Tai Chi style. Yeah, going from yesterday's video. Awesome. All right, so we want your legs, you know, you don't want to get completely exhausted, okay? So if you're getting to the point where you just can't move anymore, take a break, all right? Um, and you can always increase the challenge by doing it a little faster or doing them a little longer. But don't, don't wear yourself out, okay? So make sure you still got some strength here. We're gonna do something really important um, that we call back and ups. 
So this is basically showing you how easily can you get from standing all the way down to the floor, all the way to your back, okay, everything down, and then back up again. So what is that motion like? Is that a comfortable, natural, familiar feeling for you? Or is that a strange and scary proposition? This is really important because if you have a fall, you're gonna have to get back up. And also, if you're comfortable with that transition, knowing which order to put which body part all the way down and how to get back up, you're gonna roll. You're gonna become more fluid. You're not gonna hit with impact, with stiffness, and you're gonna have a lot easier time and less risk. So, a couple ways you can do it. Um, you might start off with a chair, and I would suggest really make sure the floor is padded. So you're yeah, saying- so here's our blanket here. Yeah, put some blankets down, put some pillows down, or make sure you have a nice soft carpet. Don't do this on a hardwood floor, okay? <laughs> make sure it's soft and comfortable. And then, you know, when you do put it down, just make sure we're not tripping on it and it's not sliding around too. Yeah, you might put two or three down or, you know, a quilt, something real cushy. So make sure you're feeling comfortable here. And we're just gonna uh, test a, a, a minute here. So we wanna see how many times can you get from fully standing all the way down to your back, back up to standing again in a minute, okay? So now, it's not a race, don't rush, don't, don't uh, you know, feel stressed about it. It's just a way to look and see how you are now, and later you can see your progress, all right? So I'm just gonna keep track of time for us, and we're gonna do it for a minute. And really take your time, use the props. You might need to lean onto a chair. You might be real springy, and you might be able to go without any props at all. So you get to decide that. All right, if you're ready, and I'm gonna walk you through it also if you're not sure about this. I'm gonna tell you the best strategy if this is a little unfamiliar for you. All right, ready? Yeah, and begin. All right. So I'm gonna do this real easy first, just leaning onto a chair, bending the knee, putting the knee down, the other knee down, the hand, both hands, knees, turning to the hip, rolling to the shoulder, to the back, head, feet down, that's down, roll over to your stomach, press your hands, hands and knees, hand to chair, step forward, hand to leg, come back up. Yeah, so that's, that's about 30 seconds, so if you do that twice, that's even a pretty good start. Yeah, and then if you can do it faster, you just kind of start to blend them together and try it, you know, with the other leg, maybe try different ways and see how many times you can get up and down. Maybe try it without the chair. Doing good, 15 more seconds. All right. Get your last couple in here if you can. Don't rush, just make sure you, you know, try to move. Two, one, <laughs> and good job. All right, so that was what, two and a half? Three and a half. Three and a half, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so you can write that down if you like, and then you can check and see with practice, maybe you can get to four, maybe five. You can see, you know, what's a reasonable goal for you, where you feel comfortable getting up and down without worrying about it. Nice. So this next one is going to be on the floor as well, so you can keep all your you know blankets and stuff down there. And um, why don't you? I could show uh, Mikey here. He's going to be my model. So what you'll do is lay down on your back, and you can bend your knees and just get comfortable here on the floor. And if you need to rest after that, back it up for a while, just relax here. Uh, go ahead and pull your knees into your chest. Just circle around a little bit. Yeah, getting used to the floor, like we talked about, I think is really important. It can tell you a lot about what's stiff, what's not in life. Yeah, you want to get make friends with the floor, okay? All right, so now this is a dead bug series. So what you'll do is you're gonna lay on your back and put uh, the legs and arms up, and they're gonna bend 90 degrees. And this up, and you're gonna bend 90 degrees. So see that? So your your elbows and knees are all gonna kind of be at the same level. And now, you're gonna raise your left hand up at the elbow and your right foot up. Okay, so it's the opposite side. Then back to where you started. Then switch, right hand up, left foot up, and back. So the knees and the elbows are staying still, so the thighs aren't moving, okay? Just like that. It's a little bit of a brain teaser. Yeah. So, just- Especially keep... when you're not alternating, if you're just going up and down. Yeah. I feel like doing it fast might actually be easier, but coming back to neutral, not as easy as it looks. Yeah, and then once you got that, you can do it without pausing and just do it right continuously. 
Be yeah. like, yeah, I think somehow this seemed easier. Yeah, and try to keep the thighs from moving. So it's not a bicycle movement, so you keep the thighs okay. the same place. Yeah, just the arms and legs. There you go. Okay, that's harder. That's harder, yeah. So yeah, you want to, you know, the tendency is to move your thighs more. All right, now straighten both arms and legs up. And now the same thing, the right arm will go up and back and the left foot goes up and back or down and back, depends on which way you are, and then switch. All right, so now take your time here. And if this is hard on your back, you can put a pillow under your hips to raise them up a little bit. That makes it a lot easier on your back. Yeah, and don't feel like you have to go all the way, even just a little bit, keep your arms up like, and legs up like this, yeah, it's kind of a good challenge already. Yeah, and it's fine to keep a little bend in your knees. Yeah, don't don't try to straighten it if it's not if it's not working well. All right, that's good. Now hug your legs in. That's really good for this whole strengthening this whole front side of the body where we tend to get weaker, and also strengthening around the core and deep inside of you as well. The psoas and some of the transverse abdominis, some of these muscles here that are really important to keep strong. Thanks. All right, so now to get back up, roll to your side. Instead of getting up like a sit-up, press your hands and make your way up into a comfortable position. All right, so now this is where we get to test your reflexes and have some fun. So you clear away any stuff that might be in the way. And this can be done sitting or standing. And you're gonna grab your ball, okay? Or your hand towel. Maybe yeah. I'll show the hand towel. Yeah, there you go. So, all right, and I got a couple different balls here, and yeah, you can go sitting if you like. All right. So, uh, nice and easy. So we're just gonna toss from one side to the other. And so a hand towel is you know, a little easier, a little lighter, it floats. Uh, if you do have a, you know, some sort of ball around you, make sure you can run after it. <laughs> yeah. Something like a bean bag is actually perfect so it doesn't roll away too far. Nice. All right, now we're gonna really challenge you. We're gonna have you close one eye at a time. All right, so um, either eye, uh, I close my left eye. And this, this is really important because we can really compensate and adapt to certain sensory organs. You know, a lot of people have, you know, one eye that you know, doesn't see as well or... Right here. Yeah, <laughs> so um, notice if, you know, uh, if this is the better one, if this is the worst one. Okay, we can switch eyes. My left side is much weaker, so this is probably going to be harder. Good. And you're open both eyes now. Um, so Nate was throwing the ball sort of underhanded. Uh, now he's going to flip over his hand and try to catch it coming down. So I think probably pretty similar with the towel, um, but if you want a little extra challenge, you can do that. Right. And using different balls makes a difference. You know, the racket ball is a little smaller, a golf ball is a little heavier and smaller. So try with different balls, different objects, see, you know, challenge yourself a little too. And you can do one handed, so one handed, alternate which eye is open, alternate eyes, alternate eyes, good, switch hands, alternate eyes, alternate eyes. Eyes and eyes closed. <laughs> but I don't know, kind of worked. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. So pretty funny there. Good way to keep you know those those sensory organs going. Your eyes, your proprioception, the quick hand agility. Um, Absolutely, it's so important. People don't realize how much reflexes play a role in their balance. So this next one also is gonna test the reflexes for your feet, okay? How quickly can you adapt and adjust? You know, I think of balance, people often think of balance as like standing still, right? I think of balance differently. I think it's about how quickly can you adapt to changes, right? Because nothing is still, nothing is, is, is stay, static, right? So how quickly can you adapt and control changes? That's really how you test your balance. Reflexes play a big role. So this is a 30 second foot reflex test. You're gonna need a book here. So take, uh, you know, just, it doesn't, you know, don't pick a, the joy of cooking, nothing huge, you know, just a, a small book. And uh, make sure you're next to a wall, okay? Yeah. And you can even use a towel here, so I'm just gonna fold yeah. my towel up. And I'm actually gonna stay seated for this. Um, and, yeah. 
Yeah, so you can do it sitting or standing. If you're doing it standing, please make sure you're standing next to a wall and that there's you know something behind you. You can have a wall right behind you as well, or a couch, something that you're really comfortable with if you you know get tired and you have to step back. All right. And just give it a little try if you need to adjust where that towel is. You don't want to be reaching too far one direction. Yeah, so what you're going to do basically is you're going to tap the toe on either side of that book, okay? And we're going to give you 30 seconds to see how many times you can tap. You're going to count each time, so it'll be one, two, three, four. If you want to just count one, two, three, and then double it at the end if that's easier. You know, if you're going supersonic speed, maybe do that way. So, <laughs> so keep track, one, two, three, four. It's touching each time is one count, all right? So we'll keep track of time for you. So you got 30 seconds to get ready here. And, uh, and then we'll do it for 30 seconds uh, with the timer, okay? So let's get that ready. And, okay, so if you're ready to go, make sure everything's feeling safe. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. probably on the higher end you know we're pretty quick guys here so whatever you got you can just make a note write it down there and now let's do the other side and if your hip was getting sore sitting uh, you can do a little bit of a lunge here yeah so stretch it out shake it out yeah it's a little different angle when you're sitting and standing all right so now the other side okay 30 seconds all right on your mark get set go This is a, important, right? My right leg is definitely stronger and faster than my left. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, same. So often, I mean pretty much without exception, there's going to be one side that's stronger and quicker. So this is important. If you have a weaker side, you may want to give that a little bit more chance to strengthen, give it a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. Yes. Great. So I hope you're feeling wonderful and we're just going to wrap up now with taking your balance test again. Nice, yeah, and if you're tired from all that, take a minute, get some water, yeah. refresh, you know, and, and give it your give it your best try, because it's fun to see uh, that improvement, good to challenge yourself, and nice, easy test you can do uh, week to week to week. Yeah, so that's something you can come back to over and over again. So yeah, double check uh, your balance, and we'd love to hear from you. So uh, we'll see you in the balance test in just a little bit. Great, so yeah, once you're all set up, uh, there's going to be five different exercises that you're going to do. Each one will be for 20 seconds, and you're going to have your eyes closed and your hands on your hips. All right. So there's going to be five different ways that you can lose your balance. So if your eyes open, okay, that counts as losing your balance. If your hands come off your hips, that counts. If you have one foot up and it comes down, that counts. And also if you're standing on one foot and you have to hop, that counts as losing your balance. And the last one is if you have a postural sway of about 45 degrees in any direction, you have to kind of catch yourself, that counts as losing your balance. Or of course, if you have to grab, you know, the chair, the wall, or if you, you know, fall back on the couch, all right? So you're gonna just keep track of each section one at a time, then you're gonna add them up together, all right? So the first section, you just bring your feet together and your hands on your hips. All right, and then I'm going to time it so you don't need to worry about timing this. And if you're ready for 20 seconds, eyes closed, begin. And 
and time. All right, go ahead and open your eyes. And now you can write into your template here how many times you lost your balance on this first one. So make sure to download and print out this template and then you'll be able to keep track of your score. All right, so the second one, the right foot goes in front of the left, okay? And make sure it's in line. So you don't want your toes splayed out. You're gonna try not to bend your knees either. So now if that's really just impossible, okay, you can you know separate them just a little bit, but do your best to keep them in line toe to heel. All right, so if you're ready, bring your hands to your hips and eyes closed, begin. and time. All right, go ahead and write down how many times you lost your balance on the second one. And these aren't easy. Uh, I'm usually good for a couple throughout this test, so stick with it and hopefully you'll see an improvement. Yeah. All right, so now the, no the next one, you just do the other side. So now the left foot is right in front of the right. All right, so in line, try to keep your knees straight. And if you're ready, hands to your hips, eyes closed, begin. and time. Okay, write down how many times you lost your balance for the third one. Now these next two will be a little trickier. So you're gonna stand on your right foot and you're gonna pick up your left foot into the air. All right, so make sure your knee is in front of you, not behind you, and in line with your hip. And also make sure you don't touch your foot to the standing leg, okay? So you're, it's not a tree pose, you're not leaning on the other leg. And if this is really impossible, you can just lightly touch your toe, but try your best to keep it up the whole time. All right, so if you're ready, bring your hands to your hips, eyes closed, begin. And time. Go ahead and write down how many times you lost your balance on the fourth one. And the last one is the same thing on the other side. So you stand on your left leg and pick up your right foot. Make sure nothing's touching. And if you're ready, bring your hands to your hips, eyes closed, begin. and time and let your feet down nice work yeah. so it's not easy mm -hmm. and so write down that last score and then on your template you can add them together and get your total All right, congratulations. You finished your five-day balance course. Hope that was fun. Yes, well done. I know it wasn't easy at some points and you've been able to be consistent. That's really important. So we're really excited that you were able to join us and we have a special gift for you. So you're gonna check your email and make sure that you pick that up. And also check how did your balance score go? So uh, did you see some improvement? Um, you know, were you able to see the percentage change over time? Leave us a comment, let us know. Yeah, uh, and we've got a full course laid out that, that does all of this and more as well. So consistency is key. And so we really want to reward you with uh, these special gifts, one of which is a discount to this three-week course. It's got dance, uh, what, what else do we do? Hiking, yep. Tai Chi, yoga, functional fitness, bottom to top, whole body, joint workouts. So it's, it's really got a lot of great information that you can keep building on uh, what you've done here. 
Exactly. You know, research shows it takes at least three weeks to build a new habit. So you've already got one weekend and the three weeks to better balance course will really keep that momentum going. So basically it's an addition to what we've done already. So yeah, we have a little more yoga, a little more Qigong, Tai Chi, and then yeah, stuff that gets you out, you know, stuff for in the car, you know, after a road trip, we try to make it really practical. And as you know, we like to have fun. We're going to try to make it fun for you as well. So please join us for the three weeks to better balance course. If you want to keep this momentum going, you know, the fact is with balance, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. You've got to really keep that momentum going. So I really hope you join us. We don't want this to be the end. Yeah, this, you know, there's some close personal ties to this. You know, we work with a lot of uh, older individuals. I've been in the health field a lot. You know, my parents are nurses. We talk about this a lot and it's just something you have to stay up on because it really does have an impact. Uh, I mean, even like hiking, I remember your mom, right, had had a... Yeah, so uh, she went hiking with her friend, and her friend was stepping over a log and caught her toe, fell, broke her femur, and they were the Channel 6 rescue, you know, segment that night. So it was, you know, quite traumatic, you know, thankfully she recovered, but, you know, it's, it's all these things, you know, even in our 40s, 50s, you know, these are real issues, and as you get older, it's just more likely that things things happen so we want to you know keep keep the falls down keep the safety up and make sure more resilient for when they do happen that's really important you know i teach yoga and i had a student who um you know he's been doing yoga for years he's 80 years old and he fell off his bike broke his hip and when he was going into the surgery and the recovery the doctor said that he was you know light years ahead of everybody else he didn't have to go into the in-person rehab for a month afterward which is standard protocol because he had built that strength and resilience in his body, his body recovered way, way faster. So you never know when you're going to need this. You know, it's it's a preventative process and it's something you really want to work on day in and day out, make it a habit. Super important. You know, and the statistics, you know, we like to have fun with this. We want this to be enjoyable, but it can be quite sobering. Um, there is research that says that adults who break their hip, half of them do not return to independent living afterward and almost half of them will die within a year. Now this is, you know, shocking and, and scary and I actually know firsthand my grandma who's 88 years old really came out of nowhere. She, uh, she had a fall. She was moving from her bedroom to the bathroom one night. She must have tripped. She doesn't remember. She fell. She broke her femur right next to her hip and she was sent into rehab. And really, unfortunately, she had another fall not long after and had complications with the surgery. And unfortunately, she passed away. And just like she became one of those statistics within a year, it, you know, she should have had many more years after that. So, you know, this is really close to my heart. This is why we do this. We really don't want you to have to go through that, seeing a loved one hurt and um, perhaps lose time with them. You know, it, it really can be scary. And we really hope that doesn't happen to you. So we're here yeah. for you. Please let us know what we can do to improve, how we can help you. And if you're in that uh, next balance course, we can have a face-to-face -face conversation too, which will be awesome. Yeah, we hope this is not the end. We hope this is the beginning of a long relationship. We want to keep helping you. And you know, we want you to be comfortable and confident in your body to keep doing the things you want to do. Next time you pass that balance test, we hope it's with flying colors. We hope you make friends with the floor. And we really hope that we can be your partners in better balance and fall prevention. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your commitment to yourself. My name is Nate. I'm Mikey. And until next time, stay, stay balanced, balanced, my friends. friends.